Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a problem I'm calling maximum query removals. It's an interesting one involving a list of numbers and a set of queries, and our goal is to be as efficient as possible with those queries. We'll break it down step by step, so don't worry if it sounds a bit complex at first. Let's get started. So here's the gist of the problem. We're given a list of numbers, let's call it. Each number in this list, say at position, tells us we need to perform a certain number of croc and for that specific position. Where do these operations come from? Well, we also get a list of each query is like a tool, defined by a start point and an end point, a query can provide one operation to any position as long as is between and inclusive. The catch is, each query can only be used once. Our main goal is to satisfy the operation demands for all positions in the list using the minimum number of queries. If we can do this, the problem asks us to return how many queries we didn't need to use, basically, the maximum number of queries that can be removed. If it's impossible to satisfy all demands, we should return minus 1. Let's walk through an example. Suppose our list is 1, 0, 1. This means at index 0 we need 1 operation, at index 1 we need 0 operations, and at index 2 we need 1 operation. And our list, after sorting them by their start times, might look like this. A query from 0 to 0, another from 0 to 1, one from 1 to 2, and one from 2 to 2. Okay, let's go step by step. For index 0, nums at 0 is 1. We need one operation. Queries starting at index 0 are 0, 0, ending at 0, and 0, 1, ending at 1. We should greedily pick the one that helps longer, so we pick 0, 1. We've used one query. Next, for index 1, nums at 1 is 0, we need 0 operations. The query 0, 1 we picked is still active here. So we have one active operation, which is more than enough, we don't need to pick any new queries. The query 1, 2 also becomes available now. Finally for index 2, nums at 2 is 1, we need one operation. The query 0, 1 ended at index 1, so it's no longer active. We currently have zero active operations. Queries available that cover index 2 are 1, 2, nums at you is men's topic situus borrow ones, query, queries men's borrow gar, and queries men's borrow world, my query, borrow role, query, alpage. 1 say, query, 1, 2. We've used another query, so we used two queries in total, 0, 1, dow 1, 2. We had four queries to start with, so 4 minus 2 means two queries were not used. These are 0, 0 and 2, 2. So the answer is 2. So, what's the first idea that might pop into our heads? We could try, well, every possible combination of queries, right? See which combinations satisfy all the demands in, and then find the one that uses the fewest queries. But, phew, that would be a lot of combinations, especially if we have many queries. This is what we call an exponential approach, and it's usually way too slow for larger inputs. We definitely need something more clever. Let's think about processing the list one position at a time, from left to right, let's say at an index. At each, we need to know how many operations are already covering this spot from queries we've previously selected. We also need a way to see all the new queries that start at this current index. These new queries become available for us to use. Now, if the number of currently active operations is less than what nums it demands, we have to pick more queries. Which ones should we pick? Here's the greedy idea. From all the available queries that cover our current spot, let's pick the one that stretches out the farthest to the right, the one with the largest right endpoint. Why? Because this query will potentially help us satisfy demands for the longest possible time. To efficiently get this query, a max priority queue is perfect. It always gives us the query with the largest right endpoint. And to keep track of how many operations are active at without rescanning all chosen queries, we can use a clever tool called a difference array. This array helps us update the count of active operations efficiently as queries start and end. All right, here's the Python code for this approach. I know, code can sometimes look a bit dense at first glance, but don't worry. We're going to walk through the key parts of this code, piece by piece, and explain exactly what's happening in plain English. First up, we do some setup. We get the length of our list, if fin for is zero, meaning no numbers to process, then all queries can be removed, so we just return the total number of queries. Then, super important, we sort our list. We sort them based on their starting points, their values. 
This helps us process them in order. We create our BISCOMA which will help us track changes in active operations. It's initialized to all zeros and has a size of plus one. We also initialize an empty list which will act as our max priority queue. Remember we'll store negative write endpoints in it to simulate a max heap using Python's minheap and a couple of helper variables to keep track of which query we're looking at and to count active operations at our current position. Now we start our main loop, going through each index from zero up to minus one. First thing inside the loop, we update our quark2 as a plom, we add whatever value is in that index. This accounts for any queries that might have ended just before this spot reducing our active operation count. Next we check for any new queries that start exactly at this index. We use our wagit to go through the sorted list. If a query's left endpoint matches, it's now available. So we take its right endpoint, make it negative, and push it onto our priority queue. Then we move to the next query. Okay, now we check if we have enough operations. The listed index tells us the demand. While our are less than this demand, we first check if it's even possible to get more operations. If our priority queue is empty, or if the best query in it, the one with the largest right endpoint, actually ends before our current index, then we're stuck. We can't satisfy the demand, so we return minus one, otherwise we can select a query. We pop the top element from our priority queue. Remember, this is the negative of the largest right endpoint. We convert it back to the actual right endpoint. This is our selected query. We increment because we've just activated one more. And, crucially, we use our Torah. This selected query will stop providing an operation right after its right endpoint. So at the index selected underscore query underscore right underscore endpoint plus one, we record a minus one in the query. This ensures its contribution is removed when we reach that future point. After trying to satisfy the demand for Hasikin's forward index, we do one more check. If trups is still less than add, it means we failed, so we return minus one. This is mostly a safeguard, as the loop before it should handle this. Once we've gone through all the indices in, if we haven't returned minus one, it means we succeeded. The problem asks for the maximum number of queries that can be removed. Well, all the queries that we added to our priority queue but never popped out are the ones we didn't use. So the final size of the E is exactly our answer. So how efficient is this solution? For time complexity, sorting the takes about m log m time, where is the number of queries? The main loop runs times for the length of the list. Inside the loop, each query is added to the priority queue at most once and removed at most once. Each of these priority queue operations takes about log m time. So across all iterations, the total time for priority queue stuff is also around m log m. This gives us a total time complexity of roughly big O of n plus m times log m. Much better than trying all combinations. For space complexity, we use the which takes order m space. The priority queue, in the worst case, might hold all queries, so that's order m space. So the total space complexity is order n plus m. So to quickly recap the key ideas, we tackled this by processing the list element by element. This is a common strategy. The core greedy choice was, when we needed an operation, to pick an available query that extended the furthest to the right. This maximizes its potential future usefulness. A max priority queue was our friend here. The difference array was a neat trick to efficiently keep track of how many operations were active at any given point without needing to rescan. And finally, the queries that were put into our priority queue but never actually selected, popped, are precisely the ones that could be removed. Their count is our answer. Hope that explanation made sense and helped you understand this problem a bit better. If it did, feel free to hit that like button, maybe subscribe for more leak code breakdowns, or drop a comment if you have any questions or thoughts. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you know, the Boba Fund always appreciates contributions. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.